Hello, welcome back to FutureFit TV. This is the second in a two-part series with Mr. Mark Laws, who's joined us again today to talk about his career in the fitness industry. And today we're going to be talking a little bit more about how he found his studies with FutureFit at the start of his career. Okay, so let's take you right back to getting qualified as a PT. Can you remember signing up with FutureFit and how, how you did that, why you did that? I remember it vividly. I, um, I just graduated. I'd done some work experience uh, within a PE department. The idea was for me to then uh, go back and do a two or three year graduate training um, course uh, on the job and working in a school probably wasn't a good fit for me uh, in terms of the, the the rules and no swearing and everything has to be done in certain ways and I kind of am a bit of a maverick in, in terms of I like to question uh, why things are done in, in certain ways. Um, and I got to the end of the academic year and somebody had um, sort of mentioned being a personal trainer and that was probably just about the, the time when being a personal trainer was actually starting to become a job whereas for 10, 20 years previously it, it wasn't a viable career option. Yeah, just for um, celebrities and that Yeah, that. definitely. It, it was starting to become much more mainstream. Um, I did a little search on, on the internet um, the, a, a few things popped up. I requested a brochure uh, from Future Fit. It, it turns out within a couple of days the pack turned up and I'm flicking through it. Um, I, I remember vividly speaking to the lady, um, Mavis Hay, um, and she was explaining everything to me. Um, it, initially, I found Future Fit through sheer fluke. Um, but she actually did uh, a very good job of explaining to me the difference between paying peanuts for um, a, a very short, quick internet course or why I was probably better off paying substantially more for a more in-depth, longer, more more complex course. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm very sort of grateful that, that, that I did because... Um, Certainly now, where I see you see such such high attrition rates with personal trainers, and uh, arguably uh, eighty to ninety percent of people who finish the course who then leave the industry within such a uh, a small amount of time. Um, it, it, I'm I'm glad that I went down that route and and had a much better um, foundation of knowledge, if you like, that that allowed me to. To, to build a career on top of mm -hmm. that's lasted for so long and hopefully a little bit longer. Yeah. What was your experience of the course? Do you remember kind of specific elements and why you found it so beneficial? Um, yeah, I did. I, I enjoyed it. I did enjoy it. I wasn't a big gym goer before going on the course. I'd never, I'd never laid on a bench press. I'd never spotted anybody. I'd never, I'd never used most of the machines. I, I, I wasn't like a, um, I wasn't a, a gym junkie who was always in the gym at, at all costs mm -hmm. at, at all. Um, I liked keeping fit and I liked doing exercise, but I, I wasn't kind of in that regimented yeah. kind of three, four sessions a week and body body splits and leg days and stuff like that was alien to me. So I, I was learning a, a huge amount of things um, as, as, I, as I went along. Um, the turning point for me at times, I felt like I was out of my depth. Uh, anatomy and physiology, um, all those types of things were were, were were difficult to grow. I'm not I'm not a natural academic. I'm more practical, hands on, yeah. more of a PE kind of guy than a chemistry, biology, physics kind of guy. Um, so, so I struggled with some areas. Um, we did we did a drill, at one part of the course where we were asked to design the. The, the most perfect program we could. We were allowed to imagine we had any piece of equipment anywhere. You've got unlimited budget, unlimited space, unlimited everything. Um, everybody was writing all of these um, workouts down, like the, the most perfect workout they could. And the instructor at the end sort of said to him, because he tipped up a suitcase full of uh, resistance tubes gave everybody a resistance tube, got into pairs, and said, right, now I want you to recreate that program that you've just that you've just written up. And everybody around the room, their faces dropped. And I looked at mine and I kind of instantly I thought, I know I know how to do that. And looking around the room and seeing how much everybody was shocked and how much they were struggling to get their heads around that, I kind of gave me the confidence that I 
like I think I get it. Yeah. I think I'm going to be okay at this because yeah. I understand that it's not necessarily about specific pieces of equipment or specific ways of doing things. It's much more about understanding what you're trying to achieve and how you're trying to achieve that. And if you can understand that, you can then adapt it to to any environment. Yeah. Um, and I think that was learning that skill and then being able to implement that bear in mind how much I was fast tracked into very different environments very quickly I think that kind of stood me in really good stead to be able to to be able to do what I did so so quickly yeah, yeah. Um, and it's still, a, it's still a, a, a concept that we instill into our courses now is yeah. about, about learning the principles and the ideas and the reasons why you do things rather yeah. than specific exercises or specific bits of kit so that you can take away take away the ideas and, and create your own create your own toolbox of yeah. exercises basically yeah, yeah. okay um, let's move on a little bit then to your thoughts on the, the, the industry generally so what would you say are the top three attributes that a personal trainer needs to forge a successful career well that's putting me on the spot yeah. I've limited it to three to try and top it. three okay <laughs> um, simplicity so you can you can spend all the time you like uh, learning the the most like specific intricacies of is twelve reps scientifically better than ten or is fourteen better than eight or all those types whether it's sets and reps or whether it's about um, which muscle groups are better working on which days uh, etc etc whatever it is you can overcomplicate it yeah. very 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 easily. Um, if you're working with somebody who wants to break a world record or they want to win an Olympic gold medal, you have to have that level of specificity um, for them to stand a chance because at, at that level of elite sport, thousands of a second can, is the difference between winning and losing. Yeah, I mean, last. Yeah, pain, yeah. Massively, massively. Um, so if you're dealing with those types of people, ignore that point. However, I reckon 99.9% .9 of all personal trainers and 99.9% .9 of all of their clients are general public who want to the lose weight, tone up brigade, yeah. or not want to feel like crap when I get up in the morning, or want to be able to yeah. play with my kids and, and not feel out of breath. And, and for those people, simple works. I The courses that I teach now, are, I say to people, they're embarrassingly simple, but devastatingly useful uh, and, and and they are There's, so so simplicity is is key you don't have to over complicate things um patience patience is important it is doing a course passing a test and then getting a piece of paper in your hand is the tip of the iceberg if you walk off that course and you put your certificate up on the wall and you think that now you are up as one of the top fitness gurus in the world then very quickly you'll be back working in Greg's with the 80 to 90 percent of the rest of the people who have just done their level two level three diploma that, that week um so you you have to be patient and you have to be patient to be in the industry for long enough to learn enough to be able to actually um pick up the skills that that that, that will make you make you good at the job mm -hmm. um the third one um, you might need to edit some of these ums and ums. <laughs> um, only three. What about particular skill or area of knowledge that's going to be useful for most persons? Um, I'm trying to think how to say it diplomatically without, without having to retake it <laughs> to go three or four off. times. So, um, <laughs> So the final, I can't think of a specific word to use yet, but I'll probably use a word as, as I explain it. But the, the, fi the final thing for a personal trainer, for me, that I wish I'd known 10 or 12 years ago, is that the actual, it's almost like there's no such thing as right or wrong. There's, there's appropriate and inappropriate. And, and if a PT can learn that skill, you go into any PT forum or you go into any gym staff room there will be pts at loggerheads arguing over whether 
that is right or whether that is right or it is should people do olympic lifting is crossfit brilliant for everybody yes it is it's amazing well anyone who doesn't like crossfit then will argue crossfit's crap no one should ever do it um and they're both wrong and they're both right um my my approach to all that sort of thing and my advice is that you have to understand there is no right and there is no wrong nothing is right nothing is wrong it's just appropriate and inappropriate depending on the person you're dealing with when you're dealing with them um what their what their goals are etc etc there's so many variables just because one thing works for one person one time doesn't mean it will work for every person every time um what i tend to see a lot within the industry is that somebody will achieve something with one client and they will then try and replicate that with everybody um, but they don't actually know how they've achieved it it might just be through the client's adherence to what they were doing uh, it might be through the the client's genetics that they picked it up more quickly or found it easier it might be to do with their background there's so many infinite number of variables but because they achieve they associate that with success they then do the exact same thing with everybody else and everything they achieve is through luck not through judgment if you achieve something through luck you can't replicate it but if you can take a step back understand the the theory as to why you did what you did understand the progressions and the regressions understand that it might have been right for that person but it isn't right for that person and to be able to modify it and make it specific to each individual client then you can replicate success with every single person and when you can replicate success then you you're sitting on a, on a gold mine and you're you have a a career in the fitness industry not just a job that you used to do where you got lucky a few times and then you had to quit because your your luck ran out. Yeah. So I don't know what word I would use to put yeah, that. No, yeah, there's, no, there's no one single word of the bit. It's, it's about it's not just about the technical skills you need to learn. You you've got to have a bit more of an open mind to kind of the softer skills yeah. around yeah, whether it's behaviour change, open mindedness, re reflecting on your own performance. It's all of those kind of things yeah. that are really important for success. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Mark, thank you for joining us today. It's been really no interesting to hear some of your insights and experience. Um, if you're interested in finding out a bit more about what Mark does and how he does it, then head to his website and also give him a follow on social media. We'll put the accounts on the, on the screen below. Um, but thanks for coming again, Mark, and uh, all the best for your future career. Thank you. Thanks for having me.